Okay. It's here now. All right, Tom, I guess it's, uh, you want me to start sure. the share screen? Yep. Okay. <coughs> share. Okay. All right, good. Here we go. All right. Everybody see Manassas Junction and station layout process? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Uh, this, uh, to start off with, this is a topo uh, topographical map that some of you may be familiar with. It is in the Atlas of Civil War Maps. You can find it in the uh, LOC, uh, the Library of Congress. And over here is uh, the original junction for the Manassas area. The Manassas Gap is heading northwest here. The o Al uh, Orange and Alexandria is heading uh, west to southwest here. The, and the, these two lines here, the north line continues to be Manassas uh, Gap. And Manassas Gap connects with the Confederate line, heading up by northeast towards, excuse me, Centerville. Virginia. Now, I mentioned Manassas Junction and Station. This connection right here is the junction, and it is the Confederate Railroad Junction, not the original junction between the Manassas Gap and the ONA over here. This, of course, is the continuation of the ONA as it heads uh, east to northeast on to Alexandria. This area over here, if I can get that cursor working again, is what I call the station. And uh, now I give these two distinctions, perhaps historically the station simply meant that it was the uh, telegraph station, uh, a basis for the telegraph station there, which mm. of course went through the line, the ONA line for sure. And we can probably guess up the uh, NASA's gap when in use. And let's see here, let's move on now. There, I've got this. there we go. Now, I three areas I initially was thinking about, Harper's Ferry, Center, uh, Center Point, Manassas Junction. Obviously I chose Manassas Junction. And so I sort of wanted to orient us to the Virginia topography real quick, overall map. You've got Washington DC here, Alexandria there. The purple line is the orange Alexandria. The yellow line is the Manassas Gap. And of course, where they meet, needless to say, is the junction area and the station area we're talking about. Walter, you'll be happy to know that over on the listing of names, I made sure to name all the railroad <laughs> lines this time. So you wouldn't have to ask the question that I should have answered before the last time. Well done. Had me on all points there. I appreciate that. Keep me on my toes. <laughs> this is uh, effectively the original map once again. Uh, this is how you would see it in the Atlas, uh, obviously in a smaller format. It, it was done by um, somebody in the, uh, the U.S. Coastal Survey, and uh, it was done in April of 1862. So that's a primary resource right there, which I appreciated a great deal. Here's the focus in on the laid out, layout area. Major reasons I chose it, because it had a combination of either USMRR. Uh, you could even do as early as you want it with the uh, ONA or Manassas Gap. So you have Confederate options as well. Uh, focusing on this, the station has uh, coming in from Union Mills here has I think eight switches on both sides of it. 
uh, be from this end of the station to this end of the junction is only a half mile. And I very much like that aspect. In the scope of the pictures that you will see, you will be able, you will be able to see pictures taken from this fortress right here. You will see these entrenchments in the distance in those photographs. I'll be able to identify them for you. Um, okay, and these uh, dotted line areas are roads. And these small square things are apparently structures either burned down or destroyed or not used. We, uh, as we'll see in photographs later, this is a uh, docking area, station area, but, but mainly a deck area there. I am guessing that this right here is an engine house. Mm. This right here is where I believe the famous turntable is. Mm. Even though it is not indicated on the topographical map, I will be able to show you in the famous turntable picture with the burnout locomotive, which would be approximately right here, um, that this track doesn't connect or was torn up, as Tom suggested, uh, from the very short distance to the turntable that's there. This, I believe, is a car house, a repair house. I believe, according to historically and what I read from Dave Bright's uh, locomotives on the turnpike, that uh, these were shared facilities by the Manassas Gap and, Alexandria, and the Orange in Alexandria. This, I'm not sure what it is up here, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if it's in the photographs as well. I am guessing that it is where those stacks are in the background of locomotive photographs. These two tracks uh, are this siding and the main ONA line here are very physically very close to each other as you will see in the photographs. Okay, let's move on here. Okay, I, I gave some dimensions of my original ideas. I originally had just the station here and a little loop where this was gonna be thoroughfare gap. That was my original thinking. Mm. Um, after speaking with DC though here, uh, I call it the DC factor suggestions because his ideas, which I am incredibly grateful for, brought it into the scope of the room size that I have. I have a 12 foot by nine foot room. DC suggested uh, shrinking the length of the layout, widening it and creating an island concept with a backdrop partition down the center, keeping about approximately two feet either side of the partition, cordoning off the different locations of the uh, junction and the station. And uh, let's see, there we go. And that now the layout size is approximately 10 and a half feet by four feet. And Tom also suggested later on of uh, instead of just making it 10 by four, make a couple of uh, two by 10 and a halves. So you have the option of expanding it later on. Is that not the correct concept you would suggest it, Tom? It could be, I don't recall. That could yeah, be. Yeah, I remember you were the one who brought that up. And so that, that brought other options that I am considering. Now, here was my first conceptual drawing, beginning with the junction down here. Uh, what I tried to do, let's see here, you're seeing this. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Ah, there we go, got it. Now, what I had on either side here were uh, 
a, just a nine inch piece of straight track. I have a uh, nine inch Atlas switch, by the way, I'm using Atlas flex track, Atlas switches with a couple of shorter Hornby switches. They're about six and a half inches because I needed the space. This, and I picked that stuff because it's in my skill set. And I, I am personally not overly worried about um, what the uh, prototypical track tie looks like. And God knows it looks beautiful when you guys do that. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, I'm taking nothing away from anybody, but I, I'm, I'm just going to handle it the way I feel comfortable with. And so what I did here, as you can tell, it says a nine and a half or a nine inch right. Uh, I've got four feet, about four feet, five inches here mm. of a sliding. Uh, this uh, center, of, which is the main line is about 57 inches. This will be a five foot sighting as well mm -hmm. of the junction. Here's the Confederate line. Mm -hmm. And here's what I believe to be the ONA um, extension coming off of the uh, mainline siding area. This is the Manassas uh, line just north of the ONA line here. And right. let's see here. First of all, do we have any questions? Just be sure I'm not going too fast. Good. Good. Clear so far. Uh, whoops. Got another one of the junction. Why? Oh, got it. Now, I had, once I showed that original, and it it's almost unchanged in this next drawing here, but here's the junction still. George suggested creating a staging area literally in the middle hmm. and coming off of the Confederate line. And I, you know, first of all, I thought it was a great idea, uh, a way to get more locomotives, you know, onto the track and all that number. I've got a lot of locomotives want to be able to use them, that sort of thing. And, but I couldn't figure out how to hide them. Thought about it, decided that originally this was the original partition. I decided I'll have an angled partition oh. on the station side over here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully two lines, most probably only Two side, only one siding though. I think reality is going to hit, and I right. think it's only going to be one in there. Right. And then an overlapping partition here. So effectively, a second partition here, and one main angled partition over here, covering up the the uh, track. Right, the, the um, staging year. And that's the addition that I made mm. to the junction. And uh, I, my, my next step is, uh, my practice has been so far as to lay the track out on the floor and see if it will physically work and go from there. Okay, so that's, here is the, blow up of the junction. This is just the junction. Unfortunately, due to new photographic evidence, I am going to disprove this portion of the drawing. I found this evidence after I did my first presentation. It seems that there's a curve. The curve starts down here and heads mm -hmm. north. Well, uh, I'll show you in a little bit that this actually, there's a third line in there and mm. it's in between the Manassas Junction and the main O&R line. And God help me, I had to look over that a thousand times before 
I decided, yep, it's a third line. Maybe it's in, uh, I don't know. It's a third line though, I'm sure of it. Here is the station side now. Mm -hmm. This is my, I'm going back to my original drawing. You'll see I have the six and a half inch Hornby here. Just got a three inch short piece of Atlas there. Uh, I've got another, um, another Hornby here, six and a half. Got an eight inch Y. I have a nine inch Atlas here. Leading up to what will be an eight inch turntable. Mm -hmm. That's enough to fit a river Rossi with the pilot hanging over the edge of the rim. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, obviously it will fit a Mantua and a Bachman or 4 I initially chose the engine house only. Uh, and so I, there, the car house, the car maintenance house, I initially dropped off of my original thinking. Then what occurred was, uh, I, I hope I say his name correctly. Uh, is it Borkman? Dave Borkman? Yeah. Yeah. Dave was concerned about, uh, you know, model railroad operational aspects right down here. He was afraid this was going to be too short of an area and cause a lot of problems. He then suggested, why don't you go up to your nine inch straight track up here, replace it with the left hand uh, Atlas nine inch switch, draw this second line right here up and hook it up there. Mm -hmm. It stays with the original prototypical look but of course it's on a curve we get that but it's still the it stays with the same prototypical concept it smoothed out an operations problem that i didn't even see at, in the first place until dave had to over explain it to me three times and once i got it i was all in again another superb suggestion that helped out with operations, helped out with a problem I didn't even know about. And as a result, I added in, there's the nine right. in left hand Atlas switch. And I just bring it to this switch. It added nine more inches down here. So hell, I threw in the uh, car maintenance building because now I have the freaking room I was like and, oh, and I didn't discover that until um, I figured out that I could move this over further after redrawing it and I and poor Dave wasn't even there to hear all my thinking of him again and okay. there's the yeah there's that staging area on this side of the station Still, you know, it's in that open area, used up some of that space, so nice and utilized. Still have the eight inch um, turntable where it's at. And this is nice and condensed. This main between this switch and this switch is six feet right here. So maximum utilization of the main line there. All right, let's see what we got here now. And here we go. So the curvature on my track begins here and go, whoops, sorry about that. Let me go back. Oh, that's neat. Hang on here. There we go. All right, forgive yourself, right? Right, Tom? There you go. Bring it up. And so this track just extends up like that on mine. But of course, it's straight here. And there's the addition to extend it and get the curve. And here's the uh, statute. This area, 
from here to here is only a quarter of a mile. Hmm. Nice and small. Okay. Yeah, whoops. There we go. Back together, side by side now. Fold this up and over on top of that. And you right. have my layout. Right. Good. Now, I decided, uh, because I was, come on, there we go. Because I was not uh, confident with, you. I must be going forward, right, John? Uh, yeah, you just, it seems like you jumped through about three or four slides. Yeah, let me get back here. There, there we go. go. Almost. Oops. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, I skipped over. Okay, there we go. My layout drawing, my updated layout drawing next to the, um, the evidence, the historical evidence blowing up. Right. Okay, now. Well, uh, not confident in my painting skills. I thought, since I enjoy going to a lot of museums, like I know all of us do, I have always taken note that there are artifacts either up on something, down below, on a stand, whatever they're at. Behind them are historical photographs. So knowing that Manassas Junction and Manassas Station uh, were heavily photographed, mainly by Alan Russell, during the time period of the Civil War. I had a lot of photographic documented evidence and could use it as partition, backdrop on both sides. Instead of having sky, landscape, I'm going to have a museum, partition, center. So, you know, we, we have, I believe this gentleman's last name is Cameraman, if I remember Camera. correctly. Cameraman, Camera. yeah. And, and this, was his, this was his interpretation of Manassas in 1861, uh, when Confederate troops were massing there. And of course, you know, uh, that's beautiful, needless to say. And I give you my transition, what my backdrop will look like, my interpretation will look like. Um, oh gosh, I just noticed that fortress back there for the first time. Mm -hmm. That'll get that might be able to place the picture later on, but not right this second. Okay. Now this is the turntable. Picture to your left. There's the turntable. Here's a very short piece of track heading into the secondary sighting line in the station. Here's the track that stops right here mm. before it reaches the rim of the turntable. There is a possibility, I've, I just recently saw a photograph of the Petersburg turntable and next to what looks like the Petersburg engine house. They have railing next to the turntable. I wonder if they use the railing to give a better fit between the track line and the turntable, a theory. Don't know, I don't see any railing here. And, but of course, this is after Jackson uh, tore it apart. This, these two stacks up here could be those buildings that we saw in the um, topographical map uh, that I can show us once again. I believe those buildings could be this right here. Right. But maybe not, okay? Because I believe the turntable is right here. And there's that track that ends. Here's the track that meets the turntable. Here's the track that ends. And here, this is a track line here. This station 
is very close together, very compact. The topographical map does not, the, the distances here, if you measured this out physically, would be longer than what we're seeing, would be wider, longer, whatever you want to say, than what we're seeing in this picture. This is condensed area. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a length of a train and a car between this line, a train with a tender, pardon me, locomotive with a tender, and perhaps a car, a 28 foot car at most. Hmm. Very condensed area. In that, in that photograph, the, uh, yes. the of cars on the one that's closest to us, is that forage or cotton or can, is this boxcar, 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 but in the very front looks like it's like a, something burlapped up or something. Those, that, those, that's hay bales uh, on okay. the yeah, train. Uh, the train was probably used to bring oxen down for the uh, reconstruction there. And then they also had stored the, the feed because that area had been cleaned out. Good call. Walter, are you talking about, my cursor is moving. Are you talking about this white stuff here? No, 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 on, on the other photograph. Yeah, right yeah. there, that one. Those are yeah, three stock cars. Yep, that's hay bales. Whoops, sorry. Yeah. That's, what I th that's what I thought it looked like. Yeah, definitely, that's hay. Um, yeah, don't need to zoom in on that to figure that out. So the photo on the right looks like just a closer, they moved the camera closer of the same locomotive with the same stacks in the back, correct? Uh, yes, and I think I can almost place where that photograph is based upon the location of the train. Mm. Here is this track. Okay, this track over here, is this track right in there where the wheels are at. This track is where the um, stock cars, thank you, are at. You'll see one section of rail down here. I believe hmm. that's the o and R, uh, o and a main line. There I go with o and r again. o and a main line, yeah. And so I predict that photograph is taken approximately right here. Shooting to the left? Angling more this way. I, uh, it means I'm wondering if he drew these incorrectly. He's maybe. got them due north of the, um, due north of the turntable. Right. But, you know, I, I, he was probably just kind of trying to get the drawing down. Yep. You know, and that's why I believe that these buildings are these structures over here. Right. Plausible, at least. Can I throw out a quick question? Please. Just, just out of my own curiosity. Don't mean to interrupt too much, but can anyone oh, identify the builder of that locomotive? Say again? Do, does anyone happen to know or does that locomotive give anyone, are there enough clues that anyone feels like they could say who built that locomotive? I'll be damned. There's a name, there's a name plate on there, gentlemen, right here. Hmm. We got to find that. And that'll be something to do in the future. I don't have a clue. John Ott, would you know who the manufacturer might have been? Oh, I tried to guess a long time ago, but I can't read the nameplate. Um, it's probably an old Norris, but I don't really know. Okay. Good. I've got a, I've got a similar photo of one that I've been trying to um, identify. Um, a Dutch wagon, very similar dome. Um, so when I saw that, it just rang a bell. Yeah, you, you see the pedestal sand dome. Right. Which, you know, that, that's pretty, pretty typical for a Norris. Okay. But this could, yeah, you know, this could really be any, anything from a half a dozen different builders. Gotcha. 
It's also a um, inside front. Um, yeah, it's a duck wagon. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to look for that later on. Okay. They left so many locomotives behind. Go well, on, John. Hit that button again. I was oh, going to okay. say that they left so many locomotives behind after the Battle of Second Manassas that uh, you know, I'd have to go down the list and, and try and do a a you know, a, a what's left over after you okay. pick out all the, no, it's definitely not this. Right. And who knows how long that one was there. Okay, let's uh, head on here now back to the station. Uh, whoops, there we go. All right, this I believe, since it's a single track line down here, and also it matches up with the topographical map. I believe this is east of the station right here. These are photographs of the same area. This is from the south side of the line. This shot right here, I believe, was taken up here at the apex of this V. Notice all the barrels here, all the barrels there. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, shot taken effectively, I'm sorry, over on this side. Okay. Now, this is where the new controversy comes up. I showed these photographs before. This is taken at the junction. This is the um, lower sighting. This is the main ONA line. And this is the upper sighting mm -hmm. here. And the junction is just to the east of here. And there's a reason I know that now. By the way, this one was taken in 62. This one says March of 1864. Hmm. There is a discrepancy now. Because look at these two photos. Looks like now, the same photo. It is. It's the same. This is, I did the car count. I did the car order. It's exactly the same, but it is a different photo because there's a man on the pole here and there's no man on the pole there. Hmm. There's a wagon yeah. to the far right here and there's less people over here. Mm -hmm. It is the different. On the right is from the photographer's book uh, that was taken apart and shot into the collection, national collection. Uh, the photo on the left, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not sure how they captioned it, but the photo on the right is, is a much older, or is the original caption with that photograph when it was made into a book. Okay. They're indifferent, but that was, that's the original book photograph from the photographer. Excellent. Yeah, everything matches up. Now, remember how we saw the curve on the the curve began and then the sighting began mm -hmm. now here's the main o and r line right here here's the lower sighting main o and a all right now look at this straight track here guys all right there's the switch that's straight here oh. is the manassas combination confederate line Oh, yeah. If anybody would like to do the math for me, that to me counted three lines of track there, correct? Yeah. The, uh, the, one of those lines could have been temporary uh, for the cleanup because that's the cleanup train. And the car with the steps out of it is a telegraph car, and the other two cars are kitchen cars. Wow. Oh, wow, man. That's a nice one. Uh, I didn't. Well, I didn't know that. Thank you for that detail. But that's still the this track. I believe this middle one connects to the main O and R somewhere. O and A. Uh, thank you. Exactly. O and A. Right. Uh, okay. Somewhere to the west of the junction here, uh, but I cannot tell you where. Don't have the photograph yet. Right next to the telegraph car in front of it. What's that little car? They got three wheels. Looks like it's made for weight. 
uh, one that, right down here. It, that's a little yeah. push car they used to move things around when they were cleaning up. Okay. They show up in several. Uh, I, in one of these, I think at the back, you can see the uh, the old baggage car, which is, was renamed the wrecking car, uh, and uh, the uh, jib crane. So mm. that's that's the wreck train. And, and you will notice that on the, the cars that were, I were identified, they have a lot of hardware on their roofs, uh, vents uh, for lights and for uh, stoves and various things. So mm. those are not the, the, the it, 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 I would like to know how many special purpose cars the US military or railroad put together because that telegraph car, telegraph cars show up in several of their operating stations uh, during military uh, 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 operations. Hmm. So th this is a uh, fort. This is that standard fortress where the other two photos were taken, and or just the one other photo actually was taken. Here's the uh, fortress line over here. The photograph was probably taken somewhere over here, across here, right, and straight up the line because we see this planked decking station thing over here. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Cool. And that, that was the new photographic evidence I have of that line. And note, see that curve right here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a third line right there in between the Manassas and the ONA. And it probably connects with the ONA is what I'm guessing. Oh, it's like a crossover. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Centerville. Uh, I, you know, I figured uh, above the Confederate line in the junction section, put Centerville in there. Uh, this is also the junction here. We were able to determine that right back here is the lower siding because uh, topographically, the lower siding is actually also physically lower. There, here is the junction to the left here. This is that decking that I showed you because this is the Confederate, uh, pardon me, this is the ONA extension and this is the Confederate line right here. Mm -hmm. Here's the hill where all the photographs are taken. There's Siding, north siding, central OR, and lower siding. Oh. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, I don't need to elaborate on that. And I think we've gotten that done. And yeah, this is an, another one closer at the junction. Once again, this is the same fortress there. And I have determined since looking at this again, I think this is facing west, looking down the single line oh, of yeah. the station. Pretty sure that's the station. Maybe wrong. Hmm. I'd I'm going to continue to look at that one. And let's see. I think that was it. Oh. Yeah. So those those were the updates I had, gentlemen. Uh, are there any questions? When do you start construction? Man, well, I'll tell you right now, about to take a very long vacation. So there's gonna be a bit of a delay, but I'm not leaving Houston until I buy the lumber for the table work. Right. Are you down in Houston? Yes, sir. I'm in Kingwood. Who am I talking to? Joel. 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 Stop have, your share. Stop your share, Roger. Yeah, let me do that. Stop share. Yeah. I'm in Where are you, Joe? Uh, Good God, man. We're going to have to get together. Yeah. <laughs> if that's all right with you, of course. That's fine. I'd love to. Oh, fantastic. Good to yes. know somebody is nearby. That's fantastic. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Well, good. Now, now, now I know who to recruit to help me. <laughs> I'm sure. yeah, I do uh, more of the uh, U.S. Military Railroad in Alexandria. Uh, oh, is yeah. that the one you're doing? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We'll compliment each other. I'm even southwest of you. That's even Roger, I, I, Roger I, I, I have I, to interject here. 
Go Roger, ahead. there's there's going to be one, one small problem. Okay, go ahead. You see only yeah. one small one. And Joel's, Joel's going to point it out to you. I know. Maybe within the next thirty seconds. Uh oh. Here you could get so much more if you converted to n scale. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Dave, were you here when I gave? Were Were you here when I gave the updates on uh, your suggestions? David, did you see the updates that I made based on your suggestions? Good, good. I was glad I didn't see you at the beginning, so I wanted to be sure. Nice research, Roger. Well done, man. That was great. You did some real in-depth uh, looking. God, that was very cool. Um, and the and thing, I'm the thing, keep looking. <laughs> the thing that it what's so cool about all those uncertainties or possibilities they're all plausibilities for whatever you want to create you know you got enough evidence there to if you wanted to put the stacks with some kind of structure in there you got enough evidence for that yeah I, i'm do i'll most probably do it yeah cool. sooner or later yeah <laughs> looking looking forward to it the only concern i had roger is the way you're talking about doing the split backdrop now. Okay. I'm just, uh, we're, how are you going to access, access the, uh, whether it's one or two tracks that are kind of hidden between the two backdrops, how are you going to access them? Are just going to back a train in there or, or and leave it without yeah. coupling or uncoupling? Oh. E effectively, if I can do two tracks, uh, I'm sure you understand there's going to have to be a switch up there. I'm looking at a um, echo curved switch that could give me the two lines and then flex track the, um, state, the main staging lines from there. My main concern is, will I be able to get the curve in there without taking the track all the way down to the main O and A station line, you know what I'm saying? I don't want it to extend too yeah. far into the junction. Pardon me, the station section of the layout. Okay. Uh, so, well, the only thing I was commenting on, Roger, was that if you have uh, track work between what's essentially two two backdrops, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult to to access that if anything goes amiss. Right. I'm the, probably not going to make those permanent backdrops. The, the, the solution, though, is a cassette um, that you have your track on that comes completely out. You can put your train in it and put it on. Uh, I have a, a it's a British concept. It's one of their fiddle yard concepts. Uh, and so you would just have uh, basically a piece of track on a removable thing with side rails, keep the cars in and those things, and you just drop it in and it, it across them. And then it works as you can refresh your, your cars and those things and have things going out and coming back on the ONA line. Or uh, uh, for that, uh, it, it's, it's very simple. I have a couple of those that I can use for like putting in a whole train. Right. You're still going to have access problems with the. Uh, That's the how you get rid of it. Things on the side, you get rid of that because it just slides in and drops. Yeah, but then you're going to have to slide it across mainline track. Are you, it goes in over and down. It's my, my the picture in my head has it very simple. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, make a comment. Yeah, yeah. Make a comment yeah, about please. the backdrop. Yes. Um, there's nothing that says the backdrops have to be absolutely fixed in place. Precisely. One backdrop can be fixed. The second backdrop can have a angle or a curve on one end of it, which will hold that backdrop vertically and allow you to pick it up and move it out of the way for any access and put it right back again later. Yeah, and, and you can even you can even have like clear plastic supports on top to secure one top of the, um, uh, of, shall we say the permanent partition to the uh, temporary partition or not temporary, but the shorter movable. partition. Yeah, the yeah. movable one. 
I've made, I have made many of these backdrops that have angles on the ends to hold them. And you don't have to secure it. You don't have to brace them or anything else. They're self-standing, works really well. Better be talking with you about that. That's for sure, man. <laughs> That's great. Another right. possibility, one thing I've done, I have uh, around my layout, because I got kids around, I have plexiglass. So what I did is I got magnets and they're fairly strong and they will snap strong enough. The plastic will break before they'll even fall over. But if you slide it up, you can undo the magnets. Just sliding will up and down. Plus we'll have electrical stuff. If I want to put stars in whatever, but uh, you can have, if you have a piece of masonite, just a little strip, like a half inch where it puts some magnets line. And when you get close to the right place, it'll lock it in and it's easy to take off. Wow. Yep. Lots of lots solutions everybody has figured out five or six ways <laughs> of getting around everything your problem is going to be after you get all the help figuring out which was help <laughs> right. exactly <laughs> that's great you got three possibilities there roger that's very cool yep always keep your mind open that's EC great you taught me that one that's what got me started with that it's been incredibly beneficial to listen to everybody uh bring in the contributions because then I get to pick and choose what's going to work for me. And I love it. And it's greatly appreciated. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. All right. Um, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to give you a little, it's just a few slides here on um, what I've been doing. It took me two years to get this going finally, but uh the slides or the layout, Tom? <laughs> no, well, the slides, no. But to, to get this thing, to make a decision around what I'm going to do, uh, this is what the layout looked like. And just to give you some perspective or context for how this is set up, there's Kennesaw Mountain off to the left. And then um, there's a, a Confederate redoubt that LeBron built for me. Of course, this is Atlanta, and the news section is right there. Uh, and I had about a dozen fellas come over after uh, a buddy of mine came with a with a sawzall and cut it. Boy, it freaked me the heck out. Oh my god! But um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's a video on. It might be on YouTube called the the Atlanta extension or something. I don't know, but it's a it's a um, time lapse video. And it's some great music behind it. Anyhow, so there's the perspective. This should give you some big picture view. Here's the section that, thanks to DC and his construction techniques, was able to build a nice bridge in there. Uh, and you can see where the section's connected. There was also a spring-fed pond in here that connected to the stream over here. So I had to eventually bridge that and uh, figure out, so this sat for literally almost two years and I was making drawings. I was thinking, what do I do? How do you build perspective, blah, blah. So I put the backdrop panel back in um, and then just built up some contours as you can see along here, still adding some and then painted the, um, uh, what do you call it? Just painted the base and then poured the Envirotex to connect the stream after I painted the base, of course, in the gully. And then it, for me, it's a matter of uh, thinking backwards, forward. So I don't touch the foreground as you all probably know as you build your layouts because you don't want to damage it and work from the back forward. Then it was a matter of how do I connect the old section with the new on the edges? Well, next. So I thought, you know what? I need to like maybe try to create a distant tree line, like the bench connection. And so I, I found this super turf, dark green, and I was just gonna stack it up to see if I can make a, a tree line that looks like about a mile away. And after I layered it a few times, that's the intention because you got these two hills, which definitely need some work. This is little kind of saw up at the top. Um, and I've got to do some hazing of some of, of these, of the back one of little kind of saw yet.
but I started to build in some scenery along the, the edge from the old to the new. And this is, you know, a lot of the sculptor, I use sculptor mode a lot in here, as you can see, it's all bumpy. And uh, what I found was that there were some natural bumps that I just painted gray for rock outcroppings. Um, and then the um, next one was figuring out, all right, how do I do uh, something even closer from the edge of the backdrop? And I happened to find these in a drawer that I didn't even know I had. Um, and so taking them out, I realized these are definitely too big, but I was able to cut these in like five or six pieces. And with some, you know, dark brown spray paint and some Aileen's tacky glue and some foliage started making a mass production of these little trees. And as you can see, I just part started to put them in and I'm, it's like, a little bit at a time. I look at it, stand back, walk away for a couple of days, and I come back and like rethink it. What do I want to do? So I put another cluster on this side. So the idea is to give some sense of distance between this line of trees and what is intended to be a, a tree line way away. I might move these a little bit more forward. I don't know. Uh, and then I started adding some more foliage to bridge the joint from the old to the new section. Of course, in here, there's like three layers of, of ground foam. Started with dirt, thanks to LeBron, uh, shipping me up some good old Georgia dirt, and then um, various, as you can see, colors of foliage. And then, you know, I was looking at, I'm thinking, okay, what else goes in here? You know, to think, you gotta read out off to the right, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? So I called Brian and he came up with the idea of uh, flats and you know his artwork. So he's got these available if, if people want to order some of these. And there's so many. I mean, if you were doing something in 1861 or whatever, uh, you have infantry. These folks on the right could be anything from prisoners to troops in camp. And the beauty of this is you can z scale them to whatever size you need. So I really scaled them down, especially when I thought, you know what, maybe I could put some troops out there as scouts. So I took some of his cavalry and then just cut out sections, very fine uh, scissors, and then took an X-Acto knife and just trimmed them out, put some pins behind them, and then tested one out here in this scene. And that's pretty close up because when you start to pull away, after I had a few figures, you can see they start even disappearing to some degree, but it gives enough of an effect where it kind of frames out the scene and gives a sense of there's activity. And then I put these trees in, this is temporary because I'm still trying to play with perspective with this. And of course, along the bank, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna put in some static grass taller grass, it's wetter, chances are there would be uh, growing a little bit more uh, uh, height of the grass. And then here they are way back in the distance. This is taken from the aisle. And, uh, uh, you know, figuring out some plausibility with this stream is the next thing is more foliage, maybe more rocks along here, I'm not sure, uh, but it's starting to come along. And then these were some of the clear lessons from the phasing is plan the scene, but it really tells me what to do, like the contours and what have you. So it's a very piecemeal project. So I've been working on this now for about four months um, and then get the base painted just so I, I can at least my eyes will settle into what is possible. And then considering the options for the backdrop transition for perspective. That was the most important thing for me is to make sure that the, the transition looked plausible. And then layering the ground cover, of course, and you can't go wrong because nature's random. And then think of the context of the layout for relevance of the scene elements. Hence, with the readout there, it just made sense that there could be some troops scouting. Um, and then look at what you have versus thinking about buying stuff you don't need. <laughs> so uh, whether it was those trees or what have you, because I was looking through the catalogs thinking what I could get. And then I thought, let me just look through my drawers. And I had everything I needed. 
And then, you know, consider what other members have created. So for Brian's Flax, I mean, there's so many of us, not so many, but there's few of us that have done some remarkable work. And I think that's, for me, that's has always been one of the great uh, resources is the brain trust of our, of our group and our members. And as long as the trains run, the scene is not to be rushed either. So that's why I figured, you know, there's no need to like finish this, be willing to tear some things out and what have you and, and make it so that it becomes something that fits the continuity from the new to the old. So that's what I've been doing the last few months, guys. Cool. Tom, that yeah. dark green that you have down there low, when you put those trees right in front of it, it looked like perfect natural shadowing of oh. the trees in the background. I really like that effect. Interesting. I didn't even think of that. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll reconsider that as I put them in and maybe take some of the dark stuff out and put something else in and just put trees in front of wherever I've got the dark foliage. Yeah, so that, that was one of my questions for you guys. Did that dark green look at all like maybe a distant tree line or not really? It Once did. again, it felt like it was the shadowing. Shadows, right. It, it started to when you had the other stuff in front of it, the soldiers and the other trees and stuff. And it looked like a distant tree line? Yeah, that's when it started to. When you were able, it started layering it to, to, uh, towards you. Cool. Uh, think John? you might have to. I think you might have to build some shapes. Um, yeah. The, the tree line didn't really look distinct. If you had some tree shapes in there, not really distinct and no branches or anything else like that, but just some random tree shapes in a slightly lighter color, that would help. For the distant tree line? For the distant yep. tree line, right. Oh, that's good. Thank you. That's great. I'll play with that too. Cool. Well, it's always fun. Always fun. So uh, that's it for me. Anybody have anything to share or any questions or? Oh, that's what I wanted to get. I got, well, I got two things. One is for uh, lighting. I had, where I got in a layout, I got some bugs. So I put a bug light up. It looks great for night lighting because it gives <laughs> that sort of dark purple, bluey kind of moonlight effect. So just kind of a fun effect if you want to have night running. So you actually put them on your around your layout? Well, I, it's just, I just have one. I've got a little four by five. I mean, it's about, yeah, about a four foot square layout. And there's a bug light there. So when it shines down, it's like, oh, this looks like moonlight. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. That's good. Cool. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you again for uh, participating and joining us. It's great to see you guys. I'm glad you're all staying healthy. And uh, Roger is going to have a new playmate with Joel that down the road. You never know who, I tell you, as much as we've been doing this, now you discover this. This is cool. I might okay. actually put all your addresses out to everybody to see who might actually be closer than you realize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that might not be a bad thing to do, okay? And, really? And, yeah, yeah, and you can just email me off the list that came out. So I've got everybody's email, so. Great. All right. I'll work on that. I'll start putting together addresses and, you know, what I don't have, I'll just send an email out to the group and you can send it to me directly so it doesn't go all over the place. And then I'll compose or compile a, a database and uh, I'll, so do you want me to make that available to just, I don't want to put that out to the whole group, right? Yeah, right. not to the whole group because no. that, that gets really wild. Well, you know what? I, here's what I'll do. Um, I'll take the names that I believe all of you are familiar with. And Joe, I'll run it by you and a couple of other guys just to make sure it, I'm not missing anybody. And then uh, you can confirm it. And then I'll, I'll send it to just those people that are on the list. Good idea. Cool. One all right, right folks. Have, a, a couple of times ago, people were talking about from a Micromark. They have a thing for measuring wire and drill size. They're out, but there's a uh, McMaster's and Carp. Uh, these people, they have it's it's a little more expensive. It's a metal one, but oh, it will, yeah. it'll do your drill size and so on. And this is working really well for me. It's metal, so if you want a drill gauge and 
uh, Micromark is out. You can get one from from these people. Mastercar. Mick oh, Mick Master. Master. Mick Master. Okay. Cool. Thank okay. you, Walter. All right, guys. Have a fabulous evening, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. I'll okay. see you All next right. fall. All, All right. right. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> hang on a second. Remember, we, we're. <laughs> Any, anyway, we were going to talk about, I actually have the solve a set. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was actually, that's what I was using. Oh, really? Oh. Yep. And it wasn't, it wasn't we're nothing at, to flatten out the at, decals? At, oh, it'll, it'll flatten the decals out, but it, I wanted to take, I wanted to remove the decals. That'll do that too. Well, will it go through, I put a light spray of dull coat over the decals will it go through that too i've had it do that huh i see i, th I think so because okay. i've done that before taking off decals after i'd uh let, let me ask you them. how would you lift the decal once it's ready to go it just kind of dissolves itself you can kind of brush it off or brush it off with a little water on the brush yeah okay we can try that because i've been sitting here and I've actually, one thing, I've done probably four or five applications and no dice. Did you decal that yourself originally? Yes. Or did you use solver set then? Yes. Solver set dissolves the decal lacquer into the paint. Wonderful. So it's, it's going to be rather hard getting it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, hey, the decal hey. is just laid on and then oversprayed. You can get it off. But once it's solver sets used on it, Right. It dissolves the lack of film, turns it almost into a paint, and the paint soaks into what's on there already. Right. Interesting. Oh, that's good. And it's all, it's all. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in the process of uh, changing, or I have a Reading 040 Camelback that was led in Jersey Central. And uh, I basically had to go in a paint remover and remove the side from the tender hmm. right down to the bare metal. Now right. I just, just repainted it today. Okay, then my next question is, anybody have a solution for taking the paint, uh, acrylic paint off of a wood boxcar side? Lightly sanding is all I would say. No, because that, that takes away the, the ribbed finishing of the lumber. Yeah. You can't do that. Well, it depends on the, what, 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 what make, maker, manufacturer. BTS. How about with a sanding stick? Oh. A real small sanding stick. No, no down because... along the side of the the lap. Well, you can't. Yeah, you, you risk you risk filling in or, or erasing the uh, the gaps between the slats. It's right. a, that's a that's a very delicate process. You have to. Do, it, oh. It's it's slightly sanding. I'm not saying go down with a. Like I don't use a four inch belt sander or even a three inch <laughs> belt sander anymore for stuff. You know, I, you have to take I, your time and do it slowly. I know it's gonna be I, hard, Rhett. Hey Rhett, when you apply those those uh, K4 decals, yeah. Rather than try to put them a drop of solva set down first. That's what I, I did. found sometimes. I said, don't do that first. Just take them. Well, do them okay. so they slide off. I get them so they slide off the paper almost. And then I get them where I want them. I dab them to make sure the moisture. And then I put just a little dab of solva set. And I like I do individual letters for my cars for DC lines. Um, I know. But so I, okay. the, and then I get the next, I get the D down and then put a, just a tiny, tiny drop. I don't cover the whole car because as, uh, who was it? As, as Andrew just mentioned, it just kind of, it, it holds the decal in place when I get, before I can get the next letter in. But if I try to do like put a drop of solva set and then put decals, and it doesn't matter the manufactured decals over that, I always invariably mess it up. So I use just the water initially, get it where I want it, soak up any yeah. excess water, Right. And then hit it with a little solvent. 
Well, you know what I found is that and then well, then when I get them all all the letters in, in the order I want them and line top to bottom and the spacing correct, then I'll hit it with solve a set and it takes everything down into the paint film. Well, mm. that's basically what I would do anytime I use I I've done uh, individual. Uh, you're dealing with one other thing, gentlemen, and that is um, that I have a central tremor. So I've got one good hand. So it's, it's, it's a lot harder with for you. It's, it's much harder. And and I try and get something. The problem with these K4 decals is they, if they were on, um, I realize now what the problem was. I was putting actually the saw was set. I thought was the softer between that of the micro saw. It turns out that the microsol is actually the one that's not as strong. So I was thinking it was solo set was not as strong, and I was using that to go before I put the decal on. And I see, the, and what I would when I and then I would go and try and move it, and I couldn't do it. No. So micro scale makes a setting solution. I. I just went looking for a bottle of it. And I don't, I can't find yeah, it. Yeah, right I had but one. The setting solution is the weakest you can get. I had one and it's after 20 years, it's gone. And I yeah. thought the micro set, the solver set was the same thing. I no, don't no, they, 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 this, this micro scale has a, uh, the setting solution, set. which is the one you can move the decals around with. Right. Then after that dries, you hit it with their, you hit it there with their uh, solver set solution. Right. Which is not as strong as the Walters solver set. Right, right. The Walters solver set. You put that on; it's not coming off. Yeah. Well, guess what? It soaks. I, it soaks right into the paint. These, these are a, a comedy of errors, <laughs> and so, uh, God, I feel like taking the box cards and throwing them against the wall and starting over again. <laughs> well, that saves you from sanding. Well. <laughs> The, the other thing I could do. I, what I always do when I screw up the decals, whether it's so much that you really can't see the, the screw up. You know what? <laughs> I, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. I, that's something that I have done so little of. And yet I, I, I've been watching everybody else doing it. So I realized I could probably solve all these problems with just a decent amount of weathering. Um,